I'd be surprised if there were no questions. Donna. Um, so I've heard it said that God doesn't cause bad things to happen, but he allows them to happen because of who we are. But your uh, explanation seems to say that he also causes bad things to happen. So the, the, the question is, where does the cause come from? Um, the, I, I, will, I will speak for the viewpoint that I currently hold. Um, which is again, uh, God knowing perfectly how every human action would play out, chose to make this universe over all others according to his purpose. Um, in that viewpoint, God allows bad things to happen. It is only by human free will that sin occurs. God is not the author of sin. He is not, he, he is not the author of evil. It is only by human free will that evil comes about. However, so the statement here is that God is not the direct cause of sinful action or unrighteous action. However, we have to acknowledge that he is the ultimate cause of human uh, unrighteous action. If he had made some other universe, I mean, God could have made a universe wherein there was no true absolute free will for humanity. And then you could you could make it under those parameters uh, where, where sin never happens. God chose that it would be maximally glorifying to himself to make a universe wherein humanity had free will. If humanity has absolute free will, sin must be possible. And so well, and so he, he caused that universe to occur. He he caused this this set of events, this set of circumstances to, to come into place. So yes, God allows human uh, human sinfulness, ultimately, but He also caused this set of sinfulness to occur. Does that make any sense at all? It is only by human free will that sinfulness happens, but it has to be that God uh, chose this universe wherein these sinful things that we see are happening. This is the difficult. This is why it's this is why it's a category error to say that he he only allows and doesn't cause because if he's all, again if he's omnis omniscient omnipotent and all powerful, everything that happens, nothing that happens can actually exist outside of God's choice and God's will. Nothing. It can't. If if, if those are the things we affirm about God, it, it can't be any other way. It's actually not possible that something exists outside of the ultimate cause of God. This is the confusing part because he is an infinite and perfect being above and over everything. This is why I said we're not talking about we're not talking about just a judge down the street uh, who has purview over this set of things. God has purview over literally everything. And so by making this universe, he made the choice that this sin would exist in the way that it does. And so again, asking God the question of, you know, how or why, perfectly reasonable. But to say it's anything other than, other than what it is, is to say that God is something other than he claims to be, or something other than we believe him to be. So I would hold, yes, God allows bad things to happen. He doesn't directly cause them, but ultimately the ultimate cause of everything is God. I still have my question, but it's more toward my father than for you. Is that okay? I go, go ahead and ask kind it. Of the I, 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 might, I might have a response. Okay. Um, so my question is, if the call of God is, would you call it irresistible, right? Overwhelming or effectual. Overwhelming. Yeah. Better. So I, we, I, I, I say that it is the effectual, not irresistible. Okay. That, you know, that the... You know, it is like falling in love. It, you know, you see and you've got this irresistible urge that somehow, some way you are attracted to the person that you get married to and that we cannot explain. That is my, it's not 
that that there is something different. So my question is more, if that's true, and if God's in complete control, why does he spend so much of the Bible warning us against disbelief? Against what? Disbelief. He says things, well, here, I'll read. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Right? Like, yeah. he's... I'm asking my question inside out and upside down, but <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying and going, yup. And I'm hearing what he's saying and going, yup. And I'm trying to kind of find why would God, if he is going to call us and nobody can resist the call of God eventually, why do people need to be warned to believe? Why do people need to be warned against disbelief? What's Maybe it's because by our um, own will that we want to do things our own way, even though that call is very small. It's like two things in our head are telling us this is the right way, this is the other way, but still we want kind of to do our own thing. I'm agreeing with you, and that's where I'm stuck because I feel like if if it's irresistible and we have our own will, he's like, Yeah, you'll get there eventually. Right? I, 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 I want to call this do it before. Go ahead. Our our relationship to God is not like having a game of ping pong. No, I wasn't trying to say that. We do something, God does something, we do something, God does something, right up to the point of the creation of the universe. You know, Will and I were talking between the class and now about, you know, that. And it's not like God looked over all of the possible universes that could exist based upon all of the reactions of the people within those universes. And he decided that this was the least worst uh, right. universe to create. Okay? God being God knew by his omission precisely what he wanted and built that universe based on that decision that was his and his alone that didn't involve what would happen. It was his decision, knowing fully well, you know, right from the beginning, this is it, this is what I'm doing. Boom. Okay. And I I see the, the uh, what Will is saying about looking over all the universes and saying, God be God didn't need to do that because, you know, and I'm just saying by God's own nature, he, he was equipped with that knowledge to begin just with, as himself. But yeah. it doesn't involve what we would do. It's rather what he would do by grace through faith, you know, that it was all part of his, his uh, original plan, you know. But and why warn us against something that he already knows we're not going to do? So I would say, well, from, from, from my point of view, it's, it's a little, I think it's a little simpler for me to understand, obviously. That's why I hold this point of view, um, because it's, that's all part of the equation, so to speak. Like God made this universe, and He knows under these circumstances, with 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 this this witness and the way that it is, and the, the the words that are in there, and the truths that are in there that testify to Him, these things will work in this way to bring about the most glory and the most. I'm not even going to say the most people who come to know Christ. I'm just going to say the most glory to God through people putting their faith in Christ. Um, like it, it's, 
That's part of part of the equation. It's part of the choice. And that again, this comes back to that's the choice. And so if I believe that God is all the things that we affirm that he is, I believe that he has made the best choice. So I, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I know in the end it's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. From Dave's point of view, if I can if I can argue for him, I would say uh, it is it's a matter of perspective. God knows, uh, God, God has predestined and knows precisely those who are going to be and chosen, those who are going to be putting their faith in Christ and will directly cause. Uh, however, um, we don't. <laughs> and so the, the, the means by which God is, is, is prompting the grace is through the body of Christ. That is, again, his choice. He's chosen to prompt the grace in people, which, again, is his supernatural grace given by the Holy Spirit. The means by which he has chosen to do that is through, through the body of Christ. Why? Uh, I don't know, yeah. but that, that's the choice made. And, again, the belief is that, in the end, I will see exactly why it is that that had to be the case to bring God maximal glory. So follow up question. Sorry. <laughs> does God want all people to be saved? And what does that mean if some are not? Like, can God not get everything he wants? <laughs> here's, here's my thought on it. God, because we see in scripture, it is God's desire that all would be saved. That, that is said in scripture. It says God's desire, not God's will, that all would be saved. Uh, those are two different things. Um, my thought is this, from, from, from my perspective, God is God. He can make all possible universes ever it, it, um, with any parameters whatsoever. There is an infinite number of things that he could do. He could decide that, uh, you know, gravity, may, maybe, maybe, he would make a, maybe he could make a universe that is, has gravity slightly stronger than it is here. And life looks entirely different. You know, even just small little parameters like that. Um, excuse me. Uh, well, lost my train of thought. What was the question again? It was if God wants all people to yes. be believers. Yes. So the parameter, a parameter that I, I, I look at scripture and I see that is most glorifying to God is that he would create people with actual absolute free will. With that parameter added, and and whatever other parameters he's he's added to to bring him maximal glory, but with that one in particular, I think it's very clear to see with the parameter added that people have absolute and total free will in and of themselves. It is actually not possible that all of those people would choose God of their own free will. Because if, if, if you made it, if you, it, 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 anything otherwise would be an act of coercion. Yeah. It would be an act of making puppets and restraining human free will in some way. And that's my belief is that that is not the case. <laughs> um, Stop and, before you and, and so, and again, and again, this comes back to why this universe over another, why is it that you and I have the, are in the universe where our lives have the, the whole history of, 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 of all of creation and all of human history has worked together such that we in this room who have faith in Christ Jesus have faith in Christ Jesus. Why us and not another group of people? That's the choice of God. And again, we believe, I'm going to say it over and over again, the, the, I want to drive this home because it actually, this is the answer to the question. He is omniscient, he is omnipotent, he is omnipresent, and he is good. We believe, just like sitting next to Martin Scorsese, that the why is because it will bring him maximal glory. How? Not sure, but I can see the parameters that he has laid out. That humans have free will. It must be, it must be that humanity has to have free will and is driven to ch freely choose of God in order for him to receive maximal glory. With that parameter in place, there are people who by their own free will are not going to choose him. 
So in short, God can't get everything he wants. No, didn't say that. He's, I know he, you didn't, but no, no, it kind of no. comes there. No, 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 no. He gets exactly what he he gets exactly what his will is. His will, first and foremost, is to glor glorify himself maximally. That okay, is, so it's a, will. he wants that more than he wants. That that is that is the thing. That is why the universe exists. That's why I said God is God. God is good, and we live to glorify Him in His fullness. We don't live. We don't live to uh, to to ensure that our spirits live forever and that other people's spirits live forever. We we. We live to glorify him in his fullness that will result in many coming to Christ through the work of the, of the body. <clears throat> but ultimately, his sole purpose is to bring maximal glory to himself, God. Kim? I, I was just going to, maybe, because I think Cheryl may be still a little bit like, but wait. Uh, yes. and, and I'm, I'm we all should be <laughs> I'm just gonna, like as you're talking I'm, to put it in the same but different perspective God made human beings in order to glorify him like that is the reason that we were created right. then when sin happened uh oh now what so he created a way to bring us back to himself which was Jesus so he wants us to come back but then that's where our will comes in. Do we choose that straight and narrow path or do we not? I think you helped him to hurt all at the same time. Because I'm sorry. It makes me go in circles yet again. Well, and again, it's not as though but sin was never planned in the, in the equation. Like when God made the universe, he knew that Adam and Eve were going to eat the fruit. And he chose to make that universe because through their eating the fruit, humanity falling into sin and the redemption through Christ, again, specifically how I trust that, that this course of events brings God maximal glory. That is the trust that I have. Not that I get everything that I want. My trust is not in, in the end, everyone's going to know Jesus and we're all going to be, we're all going to be eternally with him in heaven and the new heavens and the new earth. My hope, my belief is that God is maximally glorifying himself. And that is what I ought to, as a Christian, desire first, foremost, and above everything else. And so in that, I trust that everything that has happened, everything that will continue to happen, will serve that purpose perfectly. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I agree. The yeah. Bible says that God is a selfish God, too, that he wants all that glory. Jealous God, yes. Jealous, sorry. Yes. yes. Sorry. I'll go to, go to Melanie first, then Dave. Um, you know, when you were saying that, Cheryl, I, it, it, just this little thought popped into my head. I, I thought of my father. And every time I leave this house, he always says to me, Melanie, be careful on the road and call me when you get home. And so when you were saying, but why does he warn us every time? And I almost think, I thought to myself, isn't that a good father does? Yeah. Hmm. So I kind of thought of it more simply in a way. Maybe that's too simple, but no. parents I don't think that's fathers too simple. or mothers, we warn our children because that's what we're supposed to do. That's what so if they didn't, why should you be like, well, why did you want me? Thank you, Melanie. I, I, I think it hits the nail on the head. It, it, yeah. it further reveals the, the loving character of God. What's every possible thing I can do? Or, you know, it, 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 how can I model what it is to be truly human? Uh, in, when I say truly human, I mean, you know, perfectly encapsulating the image of God or, or reflecting the image of God. And so by God continuing to, to remind us as you say, it's as, a, it's, it's as a father should do, as a good father would do. Dave. And, and Bill, if you can build along the loving character of God, we've gone through over and over again, not all Israel is Israel. <laughs> you know, I've got to, not all Israel is saved. Okay? We've mentioned that being the case, the, it, Paul is now opening this up to the Greeks. And logically, if not all Israel is Israel, not all of Esau are Esau. Yep. And there are members of that or of the Greeks who are in need of hearing the gospel because God wants them in his um, kingdom. Expanding that, okay? We have, okay, we have to realize not all 
everyone who calls themselves Christian is Christian. And even going further, looking at it from our perspective now, we cannot deny God's ability to save someone who is not Christian, who has not heard the gospel, whether it be a embryo, okay, or someone just simply who has not heard that that is his right as God to save whoever he wishes. But that turns around and says, knowing this, it's our responsibility to proclaim that which we know that God is wanting to save everyone. So if there is this, you know, not universalistic, that there is no such thing as hell, but there is this message that's been given to us that God's love is a lot bigger than what we can imagine. And dare I use the phrase, his love is irresistible. Which, of course, is the only point that we disagree on. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, are there other questions? And again, it's, it's thick theology and philosophy and lots of, lots of just trying to hold lots of things in the brain all at once. Um, so I don't want to shortchange people on the opportunity to ask questions, but I want to close with a parting comment on this conversation. So additional questions. Just a comment. Isn't it wonderful when we get to heaven? We'll get some answers. All the answers. <laughs> we, we'll get as many answers as the Lord deems and right to give us. <laughs> we'll yeah. Good point. The yeah. thing I want yeah. to say uh, as we close, um, really simply, it is, it is I, I would say it is important and necessary that we as Christians affirm the sovereignty of God in its fullness. If we cannot do that, then we have no security in Christ. May it never ever be that we take a conversation like this and make this the whole thing. The point of us gathering together as, as saints is to edify one another in our understanding of God and the the, the the, the primary way in which God has revealed his love and character to us is through the gospel. Not theologizing and speculating about exactly how God has, has, has machined the universe to be. This is a good thing to do. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do. I, I wouldn't have preached the sermon the way I did. I wouldn't, we wouldn't have had this conversation if I didn't think it was a good thing to do. And if God didn't give us minds to talk about these things. But the primary thing that we are called together to do is to testify to his glory in his fullness in the person of Christ Jesus who came and died and rose again for those, for you and me and those who have never heard that message before and have not yet responded to that message. Regardless of what you believe about how God has, how God has formed the universe, this is the thing that we are commanded to rally around. And this is the thing we are commanded to, uh, to, 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 to bring to all the nations. This is the means by which God is accomplishing his will, is by we imperfect people bearing the Holy Spirit and the gospel to all the world. May it never be that a conversation like this ever gets in the way of that purpose which we have in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we grieve for those who don't know you. We trust and it is a comfort 
to trust and affirm you in all of your fullness of glory. And yet we, as people who can't see the end of the story yet, grieve those who don't know you. Well up in your people. May it be that this, such a conversation as this would both encourage us in the promise that we have in you, the life and the salvation that we have in you, that that will never be taken away. It may be an encouragement to go out and tell other people of that promise, such that again, in your sovereign will, they would be brought into the family. They would respond and love you and never have that promise taken away from them. And yet, Lord, we grieve because we know that the way is narrow and not all will walk upon it. We believe this grieves you as well. And yet we have faith that you are glorified. Strengthen your church. We are armed with your spirit and your gospel. Strengthen your church to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.